two team keep it clean welcome to another episode of nfl questions from subscribers and it's been like literally forever since we've been able to do one of these because ravens have had so much going on over the past not even just a couple of weeks but they just been having a lot going on uh but what question from subscribers is because i'm sure a lot of y'all forgot about that but what that is, is a series where you can ask me any NFL question and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be a part of it, you can either send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Appreciate y'all patrons, by the way. All the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can just send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. If not, that's fine. We got some great questions like we always do. Thank you all for being so patient with questions from subs. Because, again, like I said, it has been forever. I almost forgot how to do it. But since I finally did remember, let's go ahead and jump into it. First question came from my boy, Daddy Gaming. Uh, he said, my boy Engraven, I hope you and the squad are doing all right. Got another question for you. I thought very deeply about this one, and I think it could be something us Ravens fans really need to keep a close eye on. Wink Martindale getting hired by the Giants is huge for us. Uh, the reason why I say that is because imagine if he flourishes there and puts together an even better defense than he had here. Maybe even better than Mike McDonald's. Uh, that would make Harbaugh look real bad. And keep in mind, Bashadi got his eyes closed on him now. You know why? Because in his recent statement about hiring Sashi Brown, he mentioned how now the president, GM, and head coach all have to report to Bashadi. It wasn't like that previously. They reported that Cass, uh, that they reported to Cass the majority of the time. Uh, things are shaping up, and if Wink puts together a better defense than us, Hobbs, Hobbs might skedaddle. Uh, much love. I hope it ain't too long, LOL. No, that's all good. Um, I don't really think so. I, I, don't, I don't really think if... Uh, I think if, if Wink puts together a really good defense, um, it would just all depend on how it comes together. But I, I don't really think that would do much for John Harbaugh at all, um, because... The the Ravens, they wouldn't be worried about the Giants defense. They would be worried about the Ravens defense. Um, now, if the Ravens defense is coming up short, that's all going to be on Mike McDonald. Um, and if the Ravens defense is doing a great job, and th despite what Wink's doing, I, I don't think Wink has any bearing on the Ravens at all. I really don't, well, except when the, the Ravens play the Giants. But I don't really think anything that Wink does has any bearing on John Harbaugh or Mike McDonald at all. People will compare, of course, because it's Ravens' previous defensive coordinator compared to that new defensive coordinator. But I, I don't think it'll have any impact. Next question came from my boy, that hitman, John. He said, at the time I'm writing this this morning, so good morning, LOL. Well, when the time that I'm answering this is also the morning. So good morning back to you, my friend. He said, will Lamar Jackson ever become a championship caliber quarterback under John Harbaugh and Greg Roman? In my opinion, the Ravens coaching staff should be embarrassed that Joe Burrow, a second year quarterback with a rookie number one wide receiver, just took over the AFC. Uh, he also took over the AFC North with ease. I understand we were injured, but wow, we could only win one game without Lamar. You telling me that this team couldn't win two or three games in like an eight game stretch to make the playoffs without Lamar? How many years has it been since we had a decent pass rush? And after all these years, we still don't have a consistent wide receiver one. Sorry for the rant, but you were right on your previous videos. Ravens let John off the hook. Oh, man. Yeah, the Bengals, um, Bengals put Ravens on notice for sure uh, because they said, hey, we're here. Hey, <laughs> what's up? We in the Super Bowl. And the Ravens like, man, we like four years. And we haven't even come close to the Super Bowl. And you can even, even if you take out this year with the injuries, okay, take out this year. What about 2020? What about 2019? And, and even 2009, even if you take out, even if you take out 2018, be like, all right, no, Lamar was a rookie that year. He only started the last, what, seven, eight games of the year. Oh, take that out too. It was 2019 through 2020. The years where the Ravens' rosters were most consistent. Didn't even come close. We, we thought, I, well, I, sure, I sure thought I was like, I just knew. Oh, man, Super Bowl about to be in Miami and Ravens about to be in there too. After that 14 and 2. So, ooh, I was like, yeah. Nope. But will they ever be a, a championship caliber team under John Harbaugh and Greg Roman? Mm. 
Oh, that is something that's scary to think about. I, I was just on a, a, a podcast the other day, um, and, and this question was asked as well. Um, I think they can be if a lot of philosophies get changed. Uh, I, I think that with um, with Greg Roman and John Harbaugh, if they change a lot of the stuff that they do, but see, that's the thing. I feel like John Harbaugh, I feel like he could he would have a greater chance at being able to change a lot of his ways rather than Greg Roman. Greg Roman is an offensive coordinator. So that means he was hired with a particular style of his offense that the Ravens had in mind where they were like, "All right, yeah, we think this could work out. We think you can do some good things here." And he did. He was a nice introductory offensive coordinator for Lamar Jackson. Amazing. Great job. Um but it just seems as if it has gone stale. But since the Ravens, they, they're going to stick with it. It's like, okay, well, pressure's on them. Pressure's on. Um, but I, if, I feel like they would have to, like, in order for them to really be a championship team under Harbaugh and Greg Roman, they're going to have to dish out some, some of the responsibilities that those guys currently have, especially Greg Roman, to some other people. Like, may. I don't know, man. It's it's just it's it's scary to think about. Um, it's it's really scary for me personally to think about. Like, man, like, can they get over the hump with those two? Um, it's because I just feel like the offense from the twenty to the twenty. I feel okay, cool, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna get their yards, but inside the twenty, it's like, oh man. And I because I just feel like this team they just rely on so much on Lamar's athleticism and it's kind of some it seems like a lot of times Lamar's athleticism can almost be like a cop-out it can almost be like ah well nah we ain't really got to do nothing crazy with the offensive line we can just get some get some guys there if pressure gets in Lamar gonna make a miss ah, it's, it's straight oh yeah this ain't my best play call but you, hey if it don't work Lamar would just take off <laughs> like hello <laughs> don't you get it so it, that's something that scares me. And I just, I, I would love to see, and again, this is nothing new from me. This is nothing new from me. I just want to see the, uh, the play call in the passing game, especially just evolve from where it was in 2019. I said this after that year, after we went 14-2, and two, um, after the playoff game, I, I said, okay, well, what's next? What's next? And even before the playoff game, I said, what's next? Because... With with that playoff game, it's like okay, they went fourteen and two, all right. But then they they went they they went directly away from what got them there. Again, one of my biggest issues with Greg Roman is that he gets away from the flow of the game. He gets away from the flow of the game. I used to hate when people would say, "Oh man," like the announcers, the analysts, all. Oh man, you can't run your way to a Super Bowl. And it would be so frustrating because it'd be like, man, like the Ravens never even tried. They never even tried because in that playoff game where they broke all in, in the year where they broke all those rushing records, they li literally ran the ball nine times with their running back. Nine times. Nine times. You had a, an injured Mark Ingram and what well, he got either six or three or six carries. I forget. And then Gus Edwards had either the other three or six. I forgot which one of them got three and which one got six. They had nine carries with their running back. And it's like Gus Edwards was healthy. He was healthy. And he had been doing his thing in that, that year, along with Mark Ingram. But you ran the ball six, six, either three or six times with him. And, and it's like they just gave up on it. And they were not down big either. They gave up on the run game. They just stopped completely. They're like, oh, you know what? Nope. Not doing it. Not doing it. And it's like, what? How? Why? Why? For what? Again, the, the, the flow of the game for Greg Roman, the flow of the game. And it just, at that point, I was like, what's, what's next? What, what's, what's it going to be? What's, what's, what's going to be next for this team, for this offense specifically? What's going to be next? What's going to go down now? And we still got some questions. Now, this year, they, they were, the passing game, it, it was taking another step. It did still have some times where it would be like, what is going on? It would be with the play calling. Now, Lamar wasn't perfect either. So don't get me wrong. He, he was not.
perfect at all. Neither were the wide receivers. But it everything starts from the beginning. Everything starts with the play call itself. And when you saw some of these situational play, like it'd be one thing if they drew up this fire play, and sometimes they did. It'd be one thing where if they drew up this fire play, and it's like, oh, man, Lamar just missed him. Oh, man, the wide receiver dropped it. Oh, man, the offensive line ain't blocked, and Lamar got sacked, or he got hurried and had to throw it away, something like that. And those things happen. But far too many times, you will see what a situational play call, and it's like, what are we doing? What is going on? Who, who is thinking of these things that the Ravens are running? Crucial third down. Third and long. Oh, we wide well, receiver screen. And, 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 and a lot of the, 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 the play, oh, third and long. Oh, QB draw. QB power. Design QB run. And it would be like, wh how, why? Why? When plays fail, and, and not to say that G-Row or offense got to be perfect, because they don't have to be, but they have to be better. They have to be so much better. They have got to be. When plays fail, I would love it. It, it, it should be on the players. It should be on execution. It should be on execution. It, it, it shouldn't be where, oh, like, like where the Ravens, even if a play would have worked, that, oh, man, they still wouldn't have got it anyway. Oh, that, that was designed, and it wasn't even to get a first down. That play design, it, it, was, it, it, didn't even, it wasn't even designed to get a couple yards. Like, the, uh, so much of the situational play calling last year had just been outright bad. And we see that too many times, too many times. That's what scares me moving forward with the team. That's what scares me. Because I, I just, I hate that it's, and I, and I had heard this a lot, but then I was like, ah, oh, well, I don't know. But when you watch it, it seems like, oh, man, that might be the case. Where it seems like on offense, they just rely on Lamar's ability so much to sort of bail them out. To sort of get them out of a, oh, okay, if all else fails, okay, Lamar will just run. You know what? Even if all else doesn't fail, we'll just design the play for Lamar to run. We'll do that. And it's like, what? And the the and then there would be those option plays. It's like, oh, I hated those so much. Y'all know. Anybody that watched the games with us, oh my goodness, those option plays just drew drove me crazy. They drove me crazy. And that's another thing too, with um we know the running backs were out. We know Ronnie Stanley was out too. But the way that they um since, since J.K. and Gus and Justice Hill, they were all out for the year. All right, you got Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray, and they, they weren't anything special in the beginning of the year. We know that. But then even what you got, you got this other guy who was with the team last year. So you got some familiarity with the Ravens and Lamar and stuff. But you got this other guy sitting there. But the Ravens are like, oh, no, 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 Tyson. No, we don't. Nope, Tyson. No, uh-uh, no. And it's like, it's, it's, it's little decisions like that that make a big impact. John Harbaugh talked about it at the presser, at his last presser. Man, we, we were just lacking on the explosive run plays this year. Oh, well, your, all your starters were out and your offensive line was banged up. But guess what? Guess what? You had an explosive runner sitting right there all year. All year. All year long. And you decided, no, nope, we're not going to use that guy. We're not even going to give him a shot. We're going to give Devontae Freeman a shot. We're going to give Latavius Murray a shot. We're going to give Le'Veon Bell a shot. But this other guy who's younger than those guys, faster than those guys, more explosive than those guys, we're not going to give him a shot at all. It just is decisions like that that just make you scratch your head and, and wonder, like, what is going on? So to, to answer your question, um, will can Lamar be a championship quarterback under John Harbaugh and G. Rowe? It's possible, but a lot would have to change. So much would have to change. 
Will they make those changes? I, I can hope so. I, I can hope so. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I hope this team just starts heading in another direction when it comes to their philosophy. And like I've said plenty of times, all right, Harbaugh, new year, let's see. We know what history says about Harbaugh. We know what history says about G. We know what history says about both of those guys. But let's see. And again, Lamar got improvements that he got to make too. The hero ball, that got to go, man. He got to live to see another down. Throw that ball away. He got to improve on that, that, that short passing game. Uh, Cause there will be times where sometimes he will lead a receiver too far, or he'll throw it behind him, uh, or, and it just won't be on the money with that short passing game. So that that's what he got to make another improvement. He also got to do a better job of seeing seeing the field, cause it's it's great, cause that's something that he did a great job at. That's something that he had did, he had done a great job of that. But he got to do a better job of seeing the field and, and finding his guys. Another thing that he could do, ooh, it will make such a big difference. We've been talking about this for a while, too, will be them timing routes. Oh, man. He can start working on those. That, that's what I would love for Lamar to work on this offseason, timing routes, to where he don't got to just throw to the open guy, but he can throw the guy open. Ooh, that, ooh, that, ooh, 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 ooh. That would be great. Um, and and we, we know with the tight window throws, that's Lamar all day. That one. He got that already. We ain't worried about that. Um, but I think he also got to do a better job of gaining big trust with other people, too. He got to build his big trust up with his other guys, too. Because, you know, hey, Mark Andrews could have three people on him. Hollywood could have four people on him. And Lamar will be like, oh, I trust him, boys. I trust him to make something happen. He'll throw it to him. And, hey, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but you got to build up big trust for other people, too. Got to give other people more opportunities as well. So it's not just all John Harbaugh and Giro. It's Lamar, too. Everybody got to step it up. Everybody. And then we could talk about everybody else, too. But those those are the main three guys. Eric DaCosta, too, now. Eric DaCosta, like, last year, he did a great job of building this team. But... Th then you got to think about the draft picks. Now, last year's draft picks is, is still early. And the early ones, they, they definitely had an impact. Like Rashad Bateman when he did play. When he actually did get an opportunity to. Uh, Dafe away. He had an impact. He, he started off real hot. Then he kind of slowed up a little bit. Got a little quiet. Then he would go like up and down. And it, it's a rookie. He was a rookie. And also, he was a rookie in this defense. Well, in that defense. Because now it's Mike McDonald's defense. So, it's, it's different now. Um, But... Eric DaCosta's drafts got to be better. They got to be more impactful. They got to be more impactful. And that's, that's on Eric DaCosta and John Harbaugh and Greg Roman and Mike McDonald. Because they have to, and Chris Horton too, but more so uh, Greg Roman and Mike, Mike McDonald because those guys have to be used to their strengths. They have to be used to the best of their abilities. But in the beginning, they have to be used. I'm not asking everybody to be a starter. Everybody's not a starter. But these drafts got to be more impactful. They got to be. They have to be. It's important that you get more playmakers. Difference makers. It's, it's so important. Don't just draft just, okay, we, we drafted this guy, that, 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 that. No. And the, the hoarding of the picks, it got to be quality over quantity. It has to be, in my opinion. It should be quality over quantity. You got, what, 9, 10 picks, 14 picks, however much picks they got. I would rather them have six or seven great draft picks rather than 10, 11, okay, or even good draft picks. I would rather them have six or seven great ones because that would mean that they got some players that can come in, make a difference, make an impact. And again, everybody don't got to be starters. Not everybody's going to be a starter. But the project players, no. Don't draft projects. You don't do well with projects. This is not a science fair. It's not. It's not a science fair. Don't draft projects. Draft guys that are ready to come in and play right away. No projects. No. 
Because if a guy's a project, especially if you draft him late, then you're going to be like, ah, uh, well, he's just a project anyway. Our expectations are low for him. So it is what it is. If he plays well, cool. If he doesn't, cool. But uh, it is what it is. No, you're not going to care that much. You're not going to be as invested in him. And I know it's a big difference between investment in like a first round pick versus a fifth or sixth round pick. I, I get that. But if you look at a guy like a project, then you're going to treat him like a project. If you look at a guy like, oh, this guy could be a potential star, you're going to possibly treat him like a potential star. Don't do the projects. So anyway, um, <laughs> to answer your question again, <laughs> yeah, I feel like some things will have to change um, if, if Lamar is going to be a, a championship quarterback uh, under John Harbaugh and Greg Roman. Next question came from my boy Marco. He said, Engraving, my brother, what's good? I was thinking, what if Hobbs makes Giro and TT co offensive coordinators with Giro focusing only on run game and T focus on, on a passing game? Giro could still be the play caller, but each of them focuses on the area of their strength. Let me know what you think. Ooh, that would be interesting. I, I think, yeah, my guy Skept the Goat, he had, uh, he had brought that out in one of those little Twitter spaces the other day. Um, that would be something right there. Uh, if they had like co-offensive coordinator roles. Um, but that would basically be the Ravens sort of pushing Giro out the door eventually. Uh, because Giro was hired as the offensive coordinator. Um, and the Ravens then, uh, after a couple of years, they brought in uh, wide receiver coaches and pass game coordinators to help him with his job where he was struggling at. So that already kind of let you know like, oh, okay, hey, you struggling with this. You need some help. So then if they had, they took a guy who was a wide receiver coach and made him the co-offensive coordinator, then that would be the writing on the wall that Giro would be getting ready to be Gigo. Uh, because you don't you don't bring somebody in to help somebody with their job where they're struggling at, and then you give them the same uh, exact job title. Like, oh, this, well, this is our offensive coordinator, and this is our assistant offensive coordinator, or, or co-offensive coordinator. That's, that's the beginning of the end. So if they did that, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad. Uh, they would. It would take a lot of humility right there to do that. <laughs> that. Like that's like imagine that. Imagine you at your job, and you. All right. Well, this person, they're gonna do the same thing. Imagine if you're at at a job where only you do something, where your your responsibility is only your responsibility and nobody else's. Imagine that. And then they bring on somebody and say, All right, this person is gonna be the co whatever you do. This person is gonna be the assistant of whatever you do. Eventually, you you would know like, oh man, uh, man, they they about to get rid of me soon. So if that happens, then that will be what that would mean. Uh, next question came from my guy Adrian. He said, "Fully healthy next season. Where do you see us ending our season um, next year with no bias? Uh, I think we could win a Super Bowl if and only if our offense is sixty five percent passing and thirty five percent running." <laughs> He put in all he put in all caps. No QB design runs. If we do only one per game, what do you think? <laughs> hey, I, I love it. Um, mm, I would say uh, right now, based off of pending free agents, because it's it's very early. We haven't even got like even if they do get fully healthy next year. Um, missed a lot of guys that are pending free agents. Um, they got to get through the draft, free agency, bringing back some of their own. Um, but right now, I would say, um, I could say AFC Championship, maybe. Um, I just wouldn't be fully convinced yet uh, that it, this team would be ready for a Super Bowl. I it, it would just I would have to see how they are in the regular season and if they really like take that jump. If they really take a significant jump as a team, um, they again, they were making a jump this year. They certainly were, but it was still the, the, a lot of situational stuff that was like, Ugh. but fully healthy. Uh, this team would be a lot different than the way that they were last year, obviously more toward the end of the season uh, when they lost more and more guys, mainly uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, but if, if you have Lamar Jackson in there, I, I think they were easily in the playoffs, easily, easily. Like this, those last six games, even if you get dog walked by the Bengals again, there's no way that Lamar Jackson lose no five games, six games. There's no way, no way. 
Um, but yeah, right now I would say maybe AFC Championship. Uh, I can't say Super Bowl right now until we see that product on the field consistently. He like gotta made it, gotta made it. Bro, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.